before it even hits your lips, you know it's going to be delicious. The textures are fantastic, the silver skin onions are nice and rich. I think that's absolutely beautiful. Seriously, absolutely beautiful. I think the lamb is the softest, most tender, flavoursome piece of lamb I've eaten in a very long time. Good on you. OK. Nobody's ever said anything that nice. They said nice things, but not like that. Delicious. They have just one hour to cook a two-course meal of their own design. Only one will win a place in the quarter-final. Mike needs to prove that he can balance his flavour combinations. I'm going to do grilled halloumi with roast cherry tomatoes on rocket with a honey and garlic dressing. Now, look, all you're doing is warming up a little bit of halloumi and making a salad dressing. Yes. I was hoping to illustrate to you guys that I can do certain flavours. And for mains, we're going to do a pan-fried uh, pork loin. So I'm going to do a rarebit topping on top. You've eaten this, have you? Cheesy pig. <laughs> yes, it does, does seem to work. I think the idea of the salad's a lovely one. But that main course with cheese on top of a piece of pork with red cabbage and, oh, I don't know, too much. Sarah is staying close to her Lancashire roots and cooking traditional hearty dishes. I'm going to make a roast loin of lamb on uh, hot pot vegetables and then uh, melting chocolate and raspberry pudding with cream. You have a pretty stressful job. Yes. Do you think that helps you cope with the pressure here? I think it does. What I call pressure is when I was on a murder investigation team, but you've got to try and keep a professional head on your shoulders because if you don't, you, you've lost the plot, really. This competition is pretty tough. I don't think it's quite that tough. Sarah is actually turning quite inspired. Simple, interesting food. But how's it going to look? Because this lady does not do smart, elegant cooking. Keith is working on two traditional dishes with a twist. For a main course, pan-fried calf's liver with a bubble and squeak, followed by a pear wrapped in filler pastry stuffed with orange and chocolate. These dishes of yours, yeah. Keith, they're hearty. Yeah. Is it showing any finesse at all? Oh, it's size of me. I haven't got a great deal of finesse about me, but I, I hope you'll, you'll think that there is a bit of finesse in it, yeah. The pear? Why is it going to have orange and filler pastry? I don't know. I think he's over-egging the pudding without using any eggs. Guys, one minute. Down your tools, please. Time is up. Can Mike prove that he's able to balance flavours with his grilled halloumi with roast tomatoes, rocket and honey dressing, followed by pork with rarebit crust, mash, red cabbage and sage? It is absolutely delicious because it's sweet with honey, it's sweet with tomato, there's the salty cheese and the peppery rocket. But it is so outrageously simple. The fragrance of the honey and the sherry vinegar, the concentrated acidity of those tomatoes, then the crunch and the texture that goes with the halloumi, it's a very well assembled dish. And we bring in the main. This feels firm, this pork. Very firm. How interesting. Because I looked at it, I thought, cheese, cabbage, sage. What's the boy doing? But actually, the flavours are fantastic. The star of your show, that red cabbage, is beautifully delicious with the fennel seed, and the mashed potato is beautifully made. But your pork is really, really overcooked. I think you're so close to doing very, very well here. Can Sarah show refinement as well as flavour with her British-inspired roast loin of lamb hot pot, vegetables and a pea and mint dressing? followed by a melting chocolate and raspberry pudding. Is it something that your, your favourite aunt makes you, or is it something that a MasterChef champion does? I think that's something a MasterChef champion does. Soft, beautifully cooked, packed full of flavour. That's as near as you can get to getting a cuddle out of a bowl of food. Before it even hits your lips, you know it's going to be delicious. The textures are fantastic, the silver skin onions are nice and rich. I think that's absolutely beautiful. Seriously, absolutely beautiful. I think the lamb is the softest, 
most tender, flavoursome piece of lamb I've eaten in a very long time. Good on you. Okay. Nobody's ever said anything that nice. They said nice things, but not like that. Delicious. Your chocolate is very, very rich, very, very, very sweet. You can just get a little tiny bit of that rum, that alcohol. No, it's good. Thank you. Appearance, again, is obviously your shortcoming. Oh, I just got the rum. <laughs> Flavour's fantastic. It's all a little bit too gooey. OK. But, Gore, you cook from the heart. Will Keith's traditional with a twist approach pay off? He's making calves liver, bubble and squeak and a red onion marmalade, followed by phyllo wrapped pear stuffed with chocolate and orange. The lovely saltiness of the bacon and the strength and iron of the liver, it's great. But four fifths of it is that sharp acidity with that red onion. Okay. Firstly, I get the saltiness of that bacon, then I get the saltiness of that bubble and squeak cake, then it's the vinegar. But actually, what stays with you the most is salt. Mm. Bring in the pudding. Look, I'm scared of that, and I love my puddings. Mm -hmm. That's enormous. Lots of pastry, which hasn't got any flavour at all. Yep. By the time you get down to the juicy pear, which is supposed to be the star of the show, mm -hmm. it's virtually all over. OK. I don't mind the acidity of orange with chocolate. But the phyllo pastry has gone solid, and it's actually making what could be really something very delicious into something a bit bizarre. Yeah. Thank you. Off you go. Love that sound. Love that white. Love that mate. <laughs> <laughs> John, all three of them are given absolutely everything to this competition. Keith is the weak one out of the three. He hasn't got any subtlety in his food at all. The, the sharpness on those red onions overpowered his liver and his bubble and squeak completely. And then that great big pastry pear pudding was scaring even me. I like the flavour of the chocolate and the orange in there, but it wasn't right as a dessert. I think I've cooked to the best of my ability as I am now, but I, I think if I was to cook the same stuff tomorrow, I think it would be different. Keith goes, and let's keep this debate between Mike and Sarah. I agree. Shall we have a little chat about Mike? These combinations today were right. Mashed potato, cabbage, fennel, the lovely sauce that went with it, the pork, and actually the mustard and cheese crust over the top of it. But that piece of pork was about as dry as a dry thing on Drysville. The guy has got the courage of his convictions. He came on here and griddled the halloumi and put the dressing on because he knew that that was enough. He has the palate and he has the confidence to go with it. John, he is a natural. Having Greg and John say that they think that I can work flavour as well. I'm so much more eager and determined to actually go further in this competition. Sarah, I love the flavour of her nearly hot pot. It doesn't look like championship winning food. Neither did her chocolate pudding with the raspberries. I would like to refine my food a bit more, but I don't want to remove it from what it means to me. I really love that style of food. The lamb was the softest lamb I've eaten in a very long time. I like the flavour of that pudding with the rich chocolate, the rum, which got your really lovely warmth in the back of your throat. I think that Sarah is a fantastic cook in the making. Mike's the one, John. Really, honestly, in your heart, who should it be? Our quarter finalist. Is Sarah. Congratulations. Woo!